Hello tankers and welcome to World of Tanks with me Marimo. Today we're having a quick look at one of the games I had in my almost stock T37. I have got a slightly upgraded gun, the top turret and the top tracks, but pretty much everything else is stock. The only equipment on this tank are 50 AP rounds, no APCR, no high explosive, normal single use consumables, coated optics, sorry binoculars and a camo net. So nothing particularly amazing. This game was pretty close to the 9.12 update and all of my mods at the time were completely and utterly screwed and so if you see me sort of glitching around or something that's more likely the culprit than me, my internet or even my terrible computer. So I start off the game by going over slightly to the left of the centre. I do that simply because everyone who is pretty much anyone knows that the middle of the map is used by light tanks and mediums. And so giant tank destroyers, like that Saint Emile who just took out our leopard, aim down it so that they can get a free shot in at the start of the game. So since that's happened and no one's really spotted anything, I'm not really sure how I want to use my T-37. It's one of the best tanks for strongholds because it's got a very good gun and it's reasonably quick. But it hasn't got particularly good camo because it's so large and so wide. So that means that as a normal scout it doesn't do quite as well as the Leopard or some of the others do. However, we spot the St. Emile as it fires into the Canava. I get one shell in. An amazingly lucky bounce there. I think that was probably because it hit his gun and bounced off that. Otherwise, it should have gone straight through. GW Panther kills the Carnarvon. British heavy tanks have got very, very poor armour when they're fighting up against artillery. Amazed I couldn't make it up that little hill, but maybe that will come when I get the top radio and the top engine and everything else that I need for the tank. So I try to move up again. My thoughts this time are that I want to try and get that M the um, Type 62 and the Easy 8. But of course, I'm not really interested in getting hit by the Suramil or any of the other TDs. So I'm a little hesitant moving out, but I quickly register where they all are and none of them are in a position to hit me. So I move forward and start putting shells into the Type 62. I don't go for the Easy 8 because the Type 62 is not facing me, and if I pulled all the way out to shoot at the Easy 8, both the Easy 8 and the Type 62 would be able to fire at me. Whereas by doing this, only the T-62 can actually fire at me. As soon as he's moved away, I then change my focus onto the Easy 8. I do double check and make sure he is out of the way, but even so. Now, this is going to show you why it's important to have a computer with over 30 frames per second and why it's a pretty good idea to know what you're doing in your tank. Because this EZ8 driver has got probably a better gun than me, slightly more armour than me, and slightly more health. And yet he's managing to miss repeatedly. And I end up destroying him. Moving on swiftly from there, Type 62 pops up again, I miss him. And so I go round to try and get him as he's moving away. So far the game is going pretty well, 7-4 which is pretty good really. I take out the Type 62 and only take a one hit in return, which, you know. At the same time, the SU-100Y and a few of the others have been complaining about the Japanese heavy tanks. Keep that in mind. Keep in mind that the only Japanese heavy tank on the enemy team is the Tier 8 Oho. Just keep that in mind, we'll come back to that later. However, I've seen an isolated heavy tank, the AMX and I decide to have some fun with him. And this is why light tanks are so incredibly dangerous to heavy tanks, especially to this AMX 5100 because it looks like he's reloading. He hasn't fired at me, he's just aiming his gun at me. And I'm able to consistently move out the way of his gun, consistently make sure that he doesn't ram me for more than probably about 20 damage, and take him from 800 hit points to zero all by using the mobility of my tank and the ability to weave out of the way of his turret. So, 
At this point, we are on 2,603 damage done, and we have three kills. I decide at this point I'm either going to go for the T-150, which has now died, or I can go all the way to the cap. And I decide cap's probably best. The only other tank left on their team are their artillery, which is at their cap, or the Oho, and he could be anywhere. He was last spotted on the one line, but he could literally have gone anywhere. He could be moving towards our cap, he could be moving towards our, their cap, he could be going anywhere. And it's not worth finding him, because he'll probably find me first and get the first shot in. So I go for the GW Panther. I note that he was aiming the other way. He has also fired. I auto-lock on. And I start firing at him. And I take him out. It's at this point that we've now got enough people in their cap circle that I don't have to worry about dying. If I do die, then, you know, it, it's a shame, but it doesn't really matter. So what I decide to do is go and find the Oho, so that we at least know where his position is, so that he can't trouble the camp. So I begin moving towards his last known position. And as I do so, I spot him. He puts a shell in, doesn't reset the cap. One of our team members damages him, probably the SU-152, because it looked like it's a HE shell. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how you kill a Japanese heavy tank. Note the fact that I am massively, massively smaller than him. And I use that height advantage. I make sure that I am constantly beneath his gun reach. And I use the weaker side armor to just repeatedly put shells in. No time only using AP, not APCR. And I'm able to take out the tier 8 Japanese heavy tank in my tier 6 American light tank. That is how you kill Japanese heavy tanks. You use the weakness of their sides and you use their weakness of gun depression. And that's how you get an ace tanker, 3,600 damage done, in a tier 6 American light tank. And that is also why I believe the T-37 is one of the single best stronghold tanks. The only other tank I believe has any sort of comparison for it is the Cromwell. So I hope you enjoyed watching that game. If you have any comments or you think I could have done something better or just want to give me your opinion, then please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And I hope I'll see you next time.